continuing our discussion on rational expressions, we are going to look into dividing polynomials or rational expressions. So before we start, I am going to use a simple example using numbers. So let's say we want to divide 17 by 3. So this number here is called the divisor. That is the dividend. And whatever number that we are going to come up over there is the quotient. So we want to find the largest number that could initially divide 17. So 3 times 1 is 3. It's quite far away from 17. 3 times 2 is 6, far away from 17. 3 times 3 is 9, far away from 17. 3 times 4 is 12, far away from 17. 3 times 5 is 15, far away from close to 17. 3 times 6 is 18. Um, it is very close to 17, but it is bigger than 17. So we want to pick uh, a number that is closer to 17. So I'm going to pick 5. Five times three is 15, and we always subtract here. 17 minus two is, <coughs> sorry, 17 minus 15 is two. And this number right here is smaller than the divisor, which would imply we stop. So that, number is called the quotient, sorry, remainder. So if a number completely divides um, another number, the remainder would be zero. For instance, let's say we want to divide 18 by three. Six times three is 18. When we subtract, we get zero. So that indicates zero remainder, which would imply a three divides 18 entirely. So we are going to extend this idea to polynomial functions, in other words, rational expressions. So let's take a simple case here. And we want to divide negative 12a cubed plus 36a minus 15. So first step always is to see if you can simplify the expression prior to starting. If you look at the numerator, a 3 is in common. So if I pull 3 out, I have negative 4a cubed <coughs> plus 12a minus 5 divided by 3a. So the 3s would get cancelled and we have negative 4a cubed plus 2a minus 5 divided by a. And that is a single term, so we don't have to go through the process called long division. We can simply separate the numerator terms with respect to the denominator and divide. So, in other words, I'm simply going to write it as 4a cubed with a negative divided by a plus 12a over a minus 5 over a. And if I start cancelling terms, a's go away, the a and the cube would go away. So we would have negative 4a squared plus 12 minus 5 over a. And that would be the final answer. I'm able to do this again as, as due to the fact that the denominator is just a single variable by itself. So moving on, this example um, is 10 times t raised 4 minus 35t cubed plus 5t squared divided by 5t squared. 
as I mentioned earlier, um, we can factor and simplify first. Um, so let's pull the 5 out. So we have 2 t raised 4 minus 7 t cubed plus t squared divided by 5 t squared. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the expression here, t raised 4 has t squared in it, t cubed has t squared in it, and t squared has t squared in it, obviously. So I could pull t squared out. I'll get 2t squared minus 7t plus 1 divided by 5t squared. So that term and that term would go away, resulting in 2t squared minus 7t plus 1. And I'm able to do this directly because the denominator just has one single term. And that is what we call a uh, monomial. Mono means one, so it has a single term in the denominator. So here we have this expression um, where we are dividing 28x squared minus 23x minus 15 divided by 7x plus 3. So at the very beginning, I mentioned here, if the number is bigger, if the dividend is bigger than the divisor, we can proceed with division. Um, but if it becomes smaller, we have to stop. In other words, the, at the next step, that becomes the dividend. And at that particular step, two is smaller than the divisor, so we stop. Now that is with regular numbers. With polynomials, however, we look at the degree. The degree there is 2. The degree here is 1. 2 is bigger than 1, so we can proceed with division. So the goal here is to come up with a number or an expression up here so that I can cancel out the first term, 28x squared. Um, so whatever expression that I come up with, when multiplied with 7x plus 3, we should get rid of 28x squared. So that expression is 4x. So 7x times 4x is 28x squared. 3 times 4x is 12x. And we subtract, always subtract. So those two would go away. Negative 23x minus 12x is negative 35x minus 15. So the power here is equal to the power, the leading uh, power here um, in the divisor. So we can go for one more step. Um, we want to come up with a number so that, or an expression, so that the first term here, which is negative 35x, gets cancelled when I multiply that expression with 7x in the divisor. So I am going to do negative 5. 7x times negative 5 is negative 35x. Negative, positive 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. When I subtract the two, I have negative 35 minus of minus 35x, which is positive 35x. Negative 15 minus of minus 15 is positive 15. So when, when we subtract, it'll become zero. An easier way to look at this, <coughs> excuse me, is to recognize that that term and that term are one and the same, and we are subtracting, so the answer is zero. So just to recap, that is the divisor, that is the dividend, that is the quotient, that is the remainder, and in this case 7x plus 3 divides 
28x squared minus 23x minus 15 entirely because the remainder is 0. Let's go on to another example. Here we have 4x squared minus 6x plus 8 divided by 2x plus 7. So the degree here is bigger than the degree in the divisor. So we can proceed. We have to come up with an expression here so that I get 4x squared there uh, when I multiply with 2x. So if I multiply 2x by 2x, I would get 4x squared. 2x plus 7 is positive 14x. Subtract 4x squared would go away. Negative 6x minus 14x is negative 20x. 8 minus, there is nothing there, so I'm going to put 0. I'll get 8. So the degree here is 1, and it is equal to that degree over there. So I can proceed with one more step. I'd like to come up with an expression here, so that when I multiply with 2x, I get negative 20x there. So that would be negative 10. 2x times negative 10 is negative 20x. 7 times negative 10 is negative 70. When I subtract, those two terms would go away. 8 minus of minus 70 is 8 plus 70, which is 78. So in this example, 2x plus 7 does not divide 4x squared minus 6x plus 8 entirely because the remainder is non-zero. That is, the remainder is 78. <clears throat> so now we want to divide y squared minus 5y plus 6 by y minus 2. So the degree here is bigger than the degree there. So we can proceed. We have to come up with a number or an expression here, which when multiplied with y would give us y squared there. So that expression is y. y times y is y squared. y times negative 2 is negative 2y. Then I subtract. Those two would go away. Negative 5y minus of minus 2y is negative 3y. And I bring the 6 down. 6 minus 0 is 6. So I have to come up with an expression here which when I multiply with y there, I end up getting negative 3y there. That expression is negative 3. Negative 3 times y is negative 3y. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. When I subtract, these two terms are exactly one and the same, so they cancel out, giving me 0. So y minus 2 divides y squared minus 5y plus 6 entirely. This would because the remainder is 0. Now that we have this idea solidified, we have to note the implication of this. If something divides a polynomial, so this expression divides that polynomial entirely, then it implies that 
y minus 2 is a factor of y squared minus 5y plus 6. That is contains y minus 2. So long division might, might seem quite long because of the process that is involved. Um, so we have an easier approach called synthetic division. Synthetic division is more mechanical and it can only be used if the divisor is of the form x minus 2 or x minus c. So important note, the divisor must be of the form x minus c, where c is any number. So how do we go about doing this? We draw something like that. We pick out the coefficients, so 3, negative 2, 5, and 4. If a term is missing, what do I mean by that? So if you look at this polynomial, the power goes from 3 to 2, 2 to 1, and 1 to 0. So there is nothing missing. If there is something missing, then we throw in a 0. Um, as a side note, Um, <clears throat> I'll show you as an example to illustrate what I'm talking about. Suppose we have x cubed minus 4 and we want to divide it by x minus 2. So when I write this out, I am going to write it as x cubed. The coefficient of x cubed is 1, but x squared is missing, x is missing, so 0, 0, and the last one negative 4. So when we have missing terms, we introduce zeros. <clears throat> so then we look at 2, that's over here, so we put 2, we bring that 3 down, we multiply 2 and 3 and put it up there, which is 6. We always add with synthetic division, negative 2 plus 6 is 4, multiply 2 and 4 and put it down up there, or put it up there, 4 times 2 is 8, we get 13 when we add, 2 times 13 is 26, and 26 plus 4 is 30. What do we do now? So here, the quotient would have higher power one less than the dividend, i.e. 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x plus 4. So the higher, sorry, I should say highest power, the highest power is one less than the dividend. So here we had x cubed, so in the quotient we have x squared, x and a constant. So what are the coefficients? The coefficient of x squared would be 3, 
the coefficient of x would be 4. And the constant term is 13. The remainder is 30. So that would imply x minus 2 does not divide. 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x plus 4 entirely. So there is an important concept called the remainder theorem. So if a polynomial is divided by x minus c, then the remainder is p of c. For example, Suppose p of x is 2x squared plus 2. And we divide it by by x minus 1. Then the remainder theorem states that the remainder is p of 1. In other words, 2 times 1 squared plus 2, you get 4. You can bet your life on this. So we'll do an example and see if we're going to lose our life or not. Um, so um, use the reminder theorem and synthetic division to find um, p of 4. Um, we have 4x raised 6 minus 25x cubed plus 35 x raised 4, plus 17 x squared. Um, it doesn't specify what we are dividing it by, so we need um, x minus c. So I am going to state here as divide by x minus 1. So according to the theorem, let me do it with x plus 1. According to the theorem, um, the remainder is p of c. So mind you, here we have x plus 1, but the remainder theorem states we need to have x minus c, which would imply minus c is equal to 1, therefore c is negative 1. So we need to find p of negative 1, which is 4 times negative 1 raised 6, minus 25 times negative 1 cubed plus 35 times negative 1 raised 4 plus 17 times negative 1 squared which would give us 4 plus 25 plus 35 plus 17 so 29 59 64 74 and 81 Let's see if this works out in our favour. So we start with synthetic division. 4. x raised 5 is missing, so 0. x raised 4 is missing, 0. x cubed, we have negative 25. Um, ah, the order is switched, so let's go back here. x raised 6 has a coefficient 4 x raised 4 has a coefficient 35, x raised 5 is missing, so 35. x cubed has a coefficient of negative 25, x squared is 17, x terms missing, constant term is missing. Keep in mind that synthetic division works if the divisor 
is of the form x minus c. Here we have x plus 1 as the divisor which would imply c is negative 1. And that c has to go here. So bring the 4 down we have 4 negative 1 times 4 is <clears throat> negative 4 add negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4 we get 39 negative 1 times 39 is negative 39 and when we add those two we have 64 negative 1 times 64 is negative 1 times negative 64 is positive 64 that would be 81 negative 1 times 81 is negative 81 we add negative 81 comes here negative 1 times negative 81 is 81 81 plus 0 is 81 so the quotient will have a degree one less than the actual uh, function so we start at x raised 5 x raised 4 x cubed x squared x and a constant term so the coefficient of x raised 5 is 4 the coefficient of x raised 4 is negative 4. The coefficient of x cubed is 39. The coefficient of x squared is negative 64. The coefficient of x is positive 81. And the, co and the uh, constant term is negative 81. And the remainder is 81 and that is exactly what we had over there so we made a good bet our life is safe